Hi there, this is Etox, and welcome back to our channel. Today, we are back with another video. I will discuss about the 175 billion peso project of the government, which is the Bataan Cavite Interlink Bridge Project. Stay tuned if you want to know more about the project. But first, don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell button to be updated of our latest post. The Department of Public Works and Highways or DPWH recently announced that it has signed a 3.03 billion contract for the detailed engineering design of the 32.15 kilometer bridge project that will link the provinces of Bataan and Cavite. The projected total cost of the project is 175 billion pesos. The detailed engineering design is scheduled from November 2020 to January 2022 and will be funded by an additional financing for the Infrastructure Preparation and Innovation Facility under a signed $200 million loan agreement last December 2019 between the Asian Development Bank and the Department of Finance. The Bataan Cafite Interlink Bridge Project involves the construction of a 32.15 kilometer bridge starting from Barangay Alas Asin in Marivelas, Bataan, crossing Manila Bay and ending in Barangay Timalan, Nai Cavite. It will involve the building of viaducts, land and marine, as well as two long span bridges. The bridge will also have a total of four lanes, two lanes per section, a tall plaza, turnaround facilities, as well as a special span bridge near the Cavite coast. The project involves construction of two navigation bridges, the North Channel Bridge and South Channel Bridge, with main span of 400 meters and 900 meters respectively. According to the DPWH, the proposed bridge project is composed of the following. Package 1, Bataan Land Viaduct, which is 5.04 kilometers. A viaduct is a specific type of bridge that consists of a series of arcs or columns, usually supported by a series of arcs or unspans between tall towers. Typically, a viaduct connects two points of roughly equal elevation, allowing passage over a valley, road, river, or other low-lying feature or obstruction. The purpose of a viaduct is to carry a road or railway over water a valley or another road. Many viaducts over land connect points of similar height in a landscape, usually by bridging a river valley or other eroded opening in an otherwise flat area. Often such valleys had roads descending either side that become inadequate for the traffic load. Such bridges also lend themselves for use by rail traffic which requires straighter and flatter routes. Some viaducts have more than one deck, such that one deck has vehicular traffic and other deck carries rail traffic. Package 2, Northern Marine Viaduct, which is 8 kilometers. Package 3, Southern Marine Viaduct, which is 12.6 kilometers. Viaducts over water make use of islands or successive arcs. They are often combined with other types of bridges or tunnels to cross navigable waters as viaduct sections, while less expensive to design and build in tunnels or bridges with larger spans typically lack sufficient horizontal and vertical clearance for large ships. Package 4 Approach viaducts to northern and southern navigation channel bridges, which is 2.6 kilometers. Package 5. Navigation channel bridges, which is 2.6 kilometers. Navigation channels are the arteries through which economic prosperity flows, providing access to deep draft ships in coastal channels and shallow draft tows in inland waterways. Engineers plan, 
design, and construct new navigation channels and channel enlargements to accommodate larger vessels and modify channels to improve safety and sustainability. Since water levels and continuous access are critical requirements for vessel traffic, all water resources, projects, and navigable waterways must account for their effect on and by navigation projects. Package 6, Cavite Land Viaduct, which is 1.31 kilometers. Package 7, Ancillary Buildings. Ancillary building means a building or structure subordinate and supplementary to the principal building or use permitted on the same lot. Includes tool sheds, storage sheds, workshops, detached garages and carports, but excludes agricultural buildings and structures or temporary dwelling units. What are the purposes of these projects? This project, Bataan Cavite Interlink Bridge Project, aims to provide a permanent road linkage between the two provinces and Central Luzon and Southern Tagalog region in order to reduce the journey time and ease traffic congestion through Metro Manila. The soon-to-be-largest and longest iconic bridge will reduce travel time from 5 hours to just 20 to 30 minutes. This is an EDSA Decongestion Master Plan. It would help decongest North Luzon Expressway as motorists can now directly travel between Central Luzon and Southern Tagalog. Other than reduced travel time and lower vehicle operating costs, the Bataan Cavite Interlink Bridge Project will provide opportunities for expansion outside Metro Manila for economic growth as well as support development of seaports of Cavite and Bataan as premier international shipping gateway to the country. A road trip to Tagaytay will soon be a real vacation with less traffic. It will not only push growth outside of Metro Manila, but will also connect three regions with close to 40% of the population and with gross domestic product exceeding 50% of the total GDP. But do you know that this project was first proposed in the 1980s? A former chair of the Subic Bay Metropolitan Authority was the first to pitch a bridge project linking Bataan in the north to Cavite in the south. He initially proposed the project back in 1987 during his first term as Congressman of Bataan and called it the Trans-Manila Bay Crossing. The idea was inspired by a similar project in Japan. It came from the Tokyo Aqualine Project, also known as the Trans-Toki Bay Expressway. Motorists cut travel time between the two regions from 90 to 15 minutes, essentially skipping driving through downtown Tokyo. The Bataan Cavite Interlink Bridge is hinged on the same concept for Metro Manila. Motorists and travelers from Bataan and the rest of Central Luzon need not go around Metro Manila to go to Cavite and the rest of Southern Luzon. The entire project will take six years to complete after DPWH announced that it had signed a contract for the detailed engineering design of the bridge, the actual engineering design activities will be carried out in the next 15 months. In summary, the Bataan Cavite Interlink Bridge Project aims to provide a permanent link between the two provinces that will significantly reduce the travel time and decongest traffic in EDSA and NLEX. This will not only help the travelers and motorists save time in traveling and lower their vehicle operating costs, but this bridge will also lessen the gap between the regions that will open up to more opportunities outside Metro Manila and will greatly help in the economic growth of the country. In conclusion, through this project, 
It is envisioned that this will encourage growth across the regions, increase the productive capacity of the economy, create jobs, increase incomes, and strengthen the investment climate in the country in general that will lead to sustained inclusive growth. So that's it for this video. If you like this video, please hit the like button. Tell us about your thoughts in the comment section. Or if there is anything that you want us to discuss, you could also leave it in the comment box below. Of course, don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell button to be updated of our latest post. Once again, this is Etox, where we value your professional growth. See you in our next video. Bye!